Amen. To build up the saints of God to do the work of the ministry. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Gospel of John chapter 8. The Gospel of John chapter 8. Look at verse number 31. John chapter 8 verse number 31. It says, Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. Amen. I'm really interested in verse number 31. It says, in the Amplified, look what it says. So Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word, hold fast to my teachings and live in accordance with them, you are truly my disciples. Tonight, I wanna to begin a new series of lessons entitled Making Disciples, amen, Making Disciples. One of the things that the Spirit of God <clears throat> has been talking to me about is, is uh, it's not about membership. Somebody say membership. membership. But about discipleship. <clears throat> See, I would rather have 10 disciples versus 100 members. Amen? Because members are not committed like disciples are. And Jesus tells us here in this passage that there is a distinguishing mark to those of us who are disciples. That we are to continue in his word. Amen? Amen? And so that's what I really want to talk to you about, making disciples, because most churches are getting membership and not making disciples. Amen. And so the Bible says in there that a, a disciple is one who gives full loyalty. Amen. One who accepts and assists in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what a disciple is. One who is loyal to the things of God. One who supports the kingdom of God. And then thirdly, those who are willing to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, to be a disciple of Christ is to live life with the express purpose of fulfilling God's will here on the earth. And that means that I will be available and actively involved in God's plan. Don't you know that God has a plan for us? Amen. And so I got to be actively involved. Amen. And available for when God calls on me. But that's going to take a conviction of the almighty. You got to be convicted to be a, a, a disciple. Amen. It's not just a church going every now and then. It's not just showing up when you feel like it. But it's being a disciple. One who is available to the things of God. Amen. But that's going to require that we change our attitude. See, we, we are in a generation now where, uh, you know, if it's not convenient for me, then I'm not going to do it. And a disciple says, regardless if it's convenient or not, I'm available, amen, and I'm actively involved in God's kingdom, amen? amen. But then there must be a consciousness adjustment. That's why God tells us that we have to renew our mind because, see, if you ever, if you grew up in church and, and your mama made you go to church all the time, Aline, then, then you said that, look, when I get older, I ain't going to church. That has to be a conscious adjustment, amen, because... My body don't belong to me anymore. The Bible says I've been bought with a price and therefore I should glorify God in my body. That's what disciples do. Amen. But then there must be some courageous actions because there are times when God tells us to move. Amen. Without full or complete understanding. But that's when faith kicks in. Amen. God, if you tell me to do it, regardless if I understand it or not right now, I'm going to do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go to Matthew 20, 28. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Look at verse number 19. Matthew 28. Verse number 19. Look what he says. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The Amplifier says, go then and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He tells us that our responsibility is to make disciples. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, in this series of lessons, I'm going to deal with 12 areas. Somebody say 12. I'm going to deal with the prosperity of sal in salvation. Amen. 
because most people don't understand what salvation is all about. And I'll get into that in just a moment. Then I'm going to deal with the preciousness of souls. Why does God want people saved? Amen. Then I'm going to talk about the promise of service. What do we get as a result of us serving the kingdom of God? Because there is some benefit for us. Even though we're disciples, even though we would do it, God, if you didn't do anything for us. But God says, I have made you a promise. Amen. For serving. Amen. Amen. Then there has to be the partnership of the spirit. Most people, because they don't understand Holy Spirit, run away from the spirit of God. Amen. But when you understand that the Holy Spirit wants to partner with us. Amen. And, and, and do good works here on earth. We will be sensitive to his voice. And then, uh, then we're going to deal with the praise and the supernatural. What happens when we praise as disciples? What happens when we offer God true praise? Don't you know that the Bible says that God is looking for those who will worship him and worship him in spirit and in truth? God is looking for the praisers, amen? And, and watch this now. Praise does not mean that you just have to sing when the song is right. Amen? Praise is an attitude. Amen? When I understand all that God has done for me, God, I'm going to give you praise. Amen? <laughs> and then we're going to talk about the pregnancy of scripture. Amen. Talk about how important the word of God is in our lives. The Bible says that man cannot live, cannot live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I need to know how important the word is. See, because if I know how important the word is, look, I will not just leave my Bible sitting idly by, but I will pick it up and study it on a daily basis. Hallelujah. Amen. Then we're going to talk about the pitfalls of Satan. What is Satan trying to do to you as a disciple? Amen. Because if you know his strategies, if you know what he's trying to do, look, you can prepare yourself for every attack. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Then we're going to talk about the prayers of the saints. What should the saints be doing? Amen. And, and, and watch this now. Most people have delegated prayer to just the prayer ministry. Uh -huh. Amen. But the Bible says each and every one of us should be praying. Hallelujah. Amen. Then we're going to talk about the power of our speaking. What happens when you open your mouth as a disciple? Amen. Because when you start speaking the word of God, there's enough power in what God said. Amen. Amen. To make whatever he said come to pass. So when I speak what God says, I got the power in my mouth to make things come to pass. Glory to God. I can't wait to get to that one. Amen. Then we're going to talk about the protection of the, of the sanctification. Amen. Protection of the sanctified. The sanctified are not just folk that go to a holiness church. Amen. See, we got this, we got this misconception about who's sanctified. What is sanctification? Does it mean that I, I, I don't wear makeup or I don't wear a short dress? Is, is, is that what sanctification is? No, baby, that's not what it means. But we're going to deal with that. We're going to talk about what true sanctification is. Being set apart for God to use you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Then we're going to talk about the potential in our sowing. What happens when I sow as a disciple? Glory to God. Amen. So those are the things we're going to deal with throughout the series. Amen. Now, go to Romans chapter number 10. Romans chapter 10. Let's talk about the prosperity of in salvation. The prosperity in salvation. Then, yeah, I believe that people only limit salvation as a ticket from hell. And that's not all salvation is all about. Amen. Salvation is not just about you being delivered from your sin. Salvation is more than that. And if we don't understand and get a, 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 a revelation of what God's type of pros prosperity for our, our, uh, our salvation is, then we will miss out on other elements that we have, amen, available to us. Now, there are two Greek words that salvation means in the Bible. One Greek word is called sozo, and the other Greek word is called soteria. And in each one of them, it means more than just salvation from the penalty of sin. It also includes deliverance. It also includes wholeness. It also includes healing. It also includes joy. It also includes peace and prosperity. It, it means to be set free from all evil and being made completely whole through faith in Jesus Christ. That's what true salvation is. Amen. Now you're in Romans chapter 10. Look at verse number nine. Romans chapter 10, verse number nine. Romans chapter 10, verse number nine. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto what? Jump down to verse 13. 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, what? Shall be saved. Now, 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 so God makes it very simple, Clint, that it doesn't matter what denomination I'm a part of to determine whether or not I'm saved. I had one guy, Glenn, tell me one time, well, if you don't belong to my church, my denomination, then you're not saved. I say, what can you find that in scripture? Amen. See, we have limited salvation to just church membership, church affiliation. Amen. If you don't have this banner on your church, then you're not, you're not, you're not, you don't have it. He told me that. He said, if you don't belong to my church, then you're not saved. I say, really? I say, well, let's get the Bible and let's read the Bible and see what the Bible says. Since the Bible is the final authority for our lives. So I read, I, I, I say, now you turn to Romans chapter 10 and 9 and 10 in your Bible. And now you read it for yourself. Now, did it mention your church denomination? He said, no. I said, oh, really? He said, no, it didn't. I said, that's right. Because that's not how you get saved. Amen. He says that if I would confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Now, notice what he, he also didn't say. He did not say that I have to confess all my sins to be saved. You know why? You probably don't remember all your sins. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's not the criteria for your salvation. He says that if you would confess Jesus as Lord, that's, that's the key. And what God has done through Jesus on Calvary's cross, then you have the right to be a part of his family. Amen. Go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. See, I found that there are some dynamic promises to this salvation. Now, remember now, it's, it's, it includes deliverance. It includes wholeness. It includes healing. It includes joy, peace, and prosperity. All in the package of salvation. Amen? But now, what are some of the promises that I find when I get saved? Mm -mm -mm. John chapter 3. Look at verse number 16. John chapter 3, verse number 16. Watch this now. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have what? <clears throat> so, so, so part of my salvation package is that I will have eternal life. Amen. Everlasting life. I'll spend eternity with the father. Now, anybody, anybody, uh, does anybody who's working have on their job a benefit package where you have health insurance and all that? Anybody have that? Okay. <clears throat> Now, you get that as a result of being a part of that company, right? You meet the probationary period in, in most cases uh, with companies, and, and they said, okay, because you do that, we're going to match your 401k, we're going to give you some health insurance, we're going to give you a vacation, we're going to do this, that, and the other, all right? Well, when you accept Jesus, there are some benefits that you receive. And part of that benefit package is that God says that you will have the ability to spend eternity with me. And watch this now. The Bible says that he is going to prepare a place for us that wherever he is, that's where we're going to be also. Glory to God. Amen. So God is making preparations right now for you to spend eternity with him. Amen. Amen. Now, go over to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Amen. Matthew chapter 16. Look at verse number 24. Matthew 16, verse number 24. I also see that as a result of me accepting Jesus and living a godly life, that there is a benefit for me. Verse 24, Matthew 16, verse 24 says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the son of man shall come in the, in the glory of his father with the angels. And he and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. Wow. So, so I, I see here, man, that... I'm going to get rewarded for how I live this life. I'm going to get rewarded for my works. What, what, what am I doing as a disciple? 
amen, for the kingdom of God. And God says, you will be rewarded for that, amen? Wow. Go to John chapter 10 now, John chapter 10. Just trying to set the foundation, amen, that there are some promises for those of us who, are, who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives. John chapter 10, look at verse number 10. The thief cometh not but for what? To steal, to kill, and what? And to destroy. I am come that you might have what? Life, Life and that you might have it what? More abundantly. So, so part of the promise of my salvation package is that I have the abundant life. And so many believers are living beneath their privilege because they don't want what God says is theirs. I remember one time uh, I, was, I was talking to somebody and they were telling me how uh, one of their family members uh, decided that they didn't want the package from the company that he was working for. And he went to the company and said, listen, I don't want your package. I don't want you to match my 401k. I don't want your retirement. I don't want anything from you. And they said, okay. And then he left the company and wanted to get what he turned down. And they said, well, you turn all this back. And so many believers are turning back the abundant life. Wow. All because of some erroneous teaching that says they ought to live in poverty. They, 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 they shouldn't have God's best. And I'm like, that's not what God said. That he promises us the abundant life. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Go to uh, Job 36. Job 36. Now, remember, I said that salvation is more than just being saved from the penalty of sin. It's about being delivered. It's about having wholeness. It's about healing. It's about joy. It's about peace. It's about the prosperity that God promised. Amen. Job 36 and verse 11. Job 36. Verse number 11. Hallelujah. Look what he says here. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. That's what God says. Amen. So, so I got a promise from God that if I would obey him and if I would serve him as a disciple, then I'll spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasure. Why? Because that's his promise. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, now when, when I really begin to, to look at salvation at a personal level see see many times we generalize things in the kingdom of god when there are times we need to personalize this thing and make it applicable for us personally and i begin to see that through salvation god demonstrate his love for me man you don't know how much god loves you until you really look at the story of Jesus. That God sent his best. His prized possession. To this earth. Not to die for himself. But to give his life as a ransom for those of us. Who would accept him. Oh my God. Go to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. And I begin to look at how much God loves us. Amen. And uh, how much God loves me. That, that he looked beyond my faults. Amen. And saw my need. I need how I needed a savior, how I needed somebody, the Lord over my life. I, I, I needed Jesus. And all of that came in the salvation moment. First John chapter three. First John chapter three. Look at verse number one. First John chapter three, verse number one. Behold, what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us that which that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall, be, we shall see him as he is. He said, beloved, what manner of love have God bestowed upon us? Amen. He said, he said think about it for a second. You know how much God loves you? That he sent Jesus to die for you? Amen? And, and look, he didn't wait for you to clean yourself up. Oh. See, see, that's, what, that's, that's what's wrong with folks. Well, when I get right, I, I'll come to the Lord. No, God says, I love you despite how you act. Amen? Regardless of how you perform, I still love you. Oh, my God. And I don't know about you, but there were some things I've done in my past. Amen? 
that if it were not for the grace of God, I wouldn't be here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. John chapter 15. Go to John chapter 15. Watch this now. The Gospel of John chapter 15. Now, we're in Bible study. So what do we do when we come to Bible study? Study the Bible. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, so you might have to bring a friend with you next time. Glory to God. Somebody to take the notes and somebody to turn to the scripture. Praise the Lord. Amen. John chapter 15. Look at verse number 13. John chapter 15. Verse number 13. Look what he says here. Greater love had no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. Man, I see the unfailing, unyielding, and unselfish love of Jesus. That he was willing to lay down his life for me. Because he loved me. Oh my goodness. He said, there's no greater love than this. That a man will lay down his life for you. Amen. Look, the person that's sitting next to you might not lay their life down for you. But Jesus did. Amen. Amen. His love is so, so wonderful that he was willing to forgive us. Just make a note of this, 1 John 1 and 9, that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's how much God loves you. Amen. Hallelujah. Then, then, like I said earlier, that in spite of what we, we were doing, God still loved us. Amen. While you were still bumping in the club, while you were still smoking your blunt, while you still were drinking your Seagram's and seven, amen, God still love you. Or, 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 or what they say now these days, your Hennessy. Your hen, what they call hen, your hen, just your hen, you're drinking your hen. Amen. God still loved us. <laughs> No, 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 no. See, see, I, when, when I, look, Latanya, when I look back and think about where I was and, uh, you know, I used to smoke as much pot as the next person. One day I was smoking dope and, uh, and I got so high. Oh Lord, I was so high that the floor was catching up with the bed I was slaying on. Now, you know, it had to be high. I mean, it was one of those, uh, one of those moments that uh, this can't be real. It's like, no, I, I mean, that, I'm laying on the bed and there's about two to, to three feet from where I'm laying to the floor. But it was like that floor was catching up with that bed, man. And I cried out, I said, God, if you save me from this, I would never do this again. How many of y'all ever had that confession? Lord, if you just save me from this one, I'll never do it again. Amen. And he loved me. He loved me in spite of that. Why? Because that's who he is. See, God is not about love. The Bible says that God is love. Amen. And then watch this now. God loved me so much that by accepting Jesus, he placed me in his family. Amen. Look, he says, I'm going to adopt you as my own. And, and watch this now. You will have all rights and privileges as a son or a daughter of God. Amen. He's he not going to treat you like a stepchild. He said, no, I'm going to adopt you into my family. I'm going to make you my son. I'm going to make you my daughter. And I'm going to, watch this now, make you an heir and joint heir of everything I have. Amen. All because I love you. Oh, my God. You mean to tell me that God loves us that much? That by accepting Jesus, I become a son of God. I become, you become a daughter of God. We become an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. All because of this salvation package. Amen. Go to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10. Watch this now. Proverbs chapter 10. Look what happens as a result of the love of God. Proverbs chapter 10. Look at verse number 12. Proverbs chapter 10, verse number 12. 
Are you ready? Let's read. Hatred stirreth of strife, but love what? Covers how much sin? All, so it doesn't matter what you've done. You might not have smoked marijuana like I did. But whatever you did, God says it's covered. So when the devil tries to, 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 to rat you out before God, because the Bible says he, he's, going, he's going every day to God to accuse you of what you've been doing. You got to understand that whatever you've done is covered. Amen. And we have a high priest that's sitting right next to the throne of God. And he's reminding his father, I paid for that. Amen. No, no, I pay for her stuff. I pay for his stuff. It's all paid for. Amen. Because my love covers it. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, now, we have to be careful with, with this new age stuff. They got some new age teaching going around these days. You know, and uh, I mean, the Bible talks about being mindful of of philosophies of men and vain teachings that's going around. Amen. And uh, uh, we got to be careful with that because it will get you off track. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, 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 you got to ask some questions, though. Why should I be saved? Why? Why do I need salvation? For those who maybe ask the question, well, Pastor Sharp, I see, I see you say, well, well, you know, if I accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, I'll be saved. But why should I be saved? I'm good. I ain't hurting nobody. I'm going to work every day. I'm going to my house. I ain't hurting nobody. Why should I be saved? Why do I need salvation? Well, it's very simple. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So watch this now. Have you sinned? Have you sinned? All of us to the affirmative can say we've sinned, right? Because if you didn't say you sinned, you're calling, you're calling God a liar. Okay? And then Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3 and 10 says that there is none righteous, no, not one. So why do you need salvation? Because you sinned. Amen. No, no, no. That, that's why we all need salvation. Because all of us have come short of the glory of God. Amen. Every man, woman, boy, and girl, all of us need salvation because there's a penalty that has to be paid. And by accepting Jesus, he has already paid that price for us. Glory to God. Amen. So, so okay, I see why I need to be saved. Now, now tell me how much it's going to cost me. You know, we always like to do a cost analysis. What is it going to cost me? It's going to cost me a hundred dollars. It's going to cost me a thousand dollars. It's going to cost me a million dollars. What is this thing going to cost me for me to be saved? Absolutely zero. Nothing. Amen. Nothing. It's not going to cost you nothing. Go to Ephesians chapter two. Ephesians chapter two. Isn't that good? That, that God didn't put a price on salvation. He tells us that it's free. Amen. You don't have to pay for it. All you got to do is just accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's all you got to do. Accept Jesus. You don't have to pay any money. Amen. You don't have to run around, do jumping jacks. I mean, shout at the top of your lungs. You don't have to do none of that to be saved. Ephesians chapter 2. Watch this now. Ephesians chapter 2. Look at verse number 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8. Look what he says. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Oh, it's a gift. It, it's a free gift that he gives to each of us as a result of us accepting Jesus. Now watch this now. If Parkdale Mall and all of its stores said, all you have to do is just show up and we'll give you free stuff. How many of y'all be at the mall right now? You say, Pew! my pastor, Bible study's over. I just got the message. Parkdale is giving everything away free. Even if you get a wardrobe of clothes for free, sooner or later it's going to wear out. Are you going to Lose weight, gain weight, and it won't fit you right. Right? 
So you're going to have to replace that stuff. Well, with salvation, it always fits. <laughs> Woo, it don't go out of style, amen? And it's absolutely free. It's free. And, and, and watch this now. Everybody will be knocking the doors down at Parkdale to get that free stuff there when it won't last for a lifetime. But they won't come to church to hear this salvation message, to receive this free gift that will last through eternity, amen? Glory to God. Okay, all right, all right. So, so, so I, I see why I need to be saved. I, I, I see how much it's going to cost me. Okay, but why do I have to accept Jesus? Why do I have to accept Jesus? Why not let me accept Buddha or, or some other character? Why do I got to accept Jesus? Okay, that's a good, man, y'all asking some good questions tonight. And I, I like this question and answer thing. You know, when you ask the question, I give the answer. Go to Acts chapter 4. <laughs> I praise the Lord, amen. I felt, I felt so, see, that's the, see them folk out there watching my web, all our social media, they, they're asking these questions. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm going to answer it for them. Amen. Acts chapter 4. Why do I have to accept Jesus? <laughs> that's a good question. And now with this modern teaching that's going around, they're, they're, they're telling folk that Jesus was just another good guy. You know, he just one of them prophets. Amen. He, he does some good works. But he is not your way to heaven. All right. Let's see what the Bible says. Acts chapter four. Look at verse number 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Amen. And here the Bible says that, look, Jesus is the only way through that thing, man. So this is why I need to accept Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So what happens? What happens when I get saved? Number one, you get forgiven your sins. Whew, thank God that God's going to forgive me of my sins. Mm, mm, mm. And, and watch this now. I, I want you to see this. Go to Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. I need you to see this. Hebrews chapter 8. When we accept Jesus, then... He forgives us of our sins, and then he has amnesia about what we've ever done. <laughs> Man, you just think about some of the stuff you've done in your past, and you be like, oh, I, oh, oh, why did I do that? And, and, and watch this now. And, and you try to remind God what you've done, and God say, what you talking about? I don't remember that. I don't remember that. I forgave you that. Look what it says here. Hebrews. Chapter 8, look at verse number 10. Watch this now. Hebrews chapter 8, verse number 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me. For the, from the least to the greatest. Here's the key right here. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember what? God said, I ain't going to remember that stuff no more. Amen. Now, look, your sin and your planned sin. The stuff you planned. That's what iniquities are. Iniquities are your plan. You planned that thing. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this now. Now, I also said that, that once I get saved, I'm not on, only am I forgiven, but I become a child of God. I have eternal life. But watch this now. God makes me a new creature. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. You know, when, when, when the apostle Paul was persecuting the church, his name was Saul. And Saul was going around putting people in jail. I mean, roughing them up all because they were Christians. And when he had an experience with Jesus on the Damascus road, God changed him. 
And so not only did God change him, but God changed his name from Saul to Paul. So one day, one day, they, 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 they caught up with Paul and said, well, aren't you the one? He said, he said, that ain't me. That ain't me. Not because it wasn't him, but, but God changed his nature now. I'm a new creature. Oh, man, look at this thing. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. See, when you become saved, you should be new. Oh, Jesus, this is so good stuff, man. Verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. Watch this now. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Wow. So, so there should be a change in me. See, there should be a progressive new you. Amen. You should be different daily because you should be dying to something that you did yesterday. Amen. And uh, deliver me from folk who just use an excuse that says, I'm just human. But I thought the greater one lived on the inside of you. I, I thought I thought you said that 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 God dwells on the inside of you. Now you are you understand that you've been bought with a price. Why are you still doing the same thing you've been doing? Amen. Could it be that you haven't been taught that there has to be a change? There has to be a change. Amen. That 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 somebody need to see something different about you. You know you used to cuss folk out. I, I know you used to cuss folk out with every everything you had, but now I look at you. You have a soft answer that's turning away wrath. There should be a change. There should be a newness about you. Watch this now. Not only, not only does God make me new, but God makes me righteous. He makes me righteous. In verse, in verse 21 of that same uh, uh, passage of scriptures in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I call it the great exchange. And why do I call it the great exchange? Because God takes something from us and gives something to us. Amen. And not that we had anything to offer. It was because of his goodness. The Bible says that he took our sin and gave us his righteousness. Oh, my goodness. In other words, in other words, Jesus put us back in right standing. Because of what Adam did. Amen. If you look at Romans and you read Romans, it, it talks about how one man Adam messed everything up. And how one man Jesus came to clean it all up. Wow. And he, 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 he said, he say, I'll take your sin. Give it to me. Give, give all your sin. Give it to me. Give it to me. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it to the cross. I'm going go to go to the cross. And I'm going to die for you. But you got to give me everything. Give me everything. I want all your sin. And he said, now, in exchange for that sin, I'm going to give you my righteousness. And when you have my righteousness, that make you right with God. Not because of who you are, but because of who I am. Amen. Now you're able to go to the throne of God with boldness because of your right standing with him. Glory to God. Amen. And this is why this is why we ought to celebrate that. Listen, thank God for Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you for Jesus, because he has made me righteous. Amen. Amen. Now, 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 watch this now. Watch this. So at the moment of salvation, at the moment of salvation, I have yielded myself now to an, another authority. Amen. Now, what, what I've done is I've said, God, thank you for saving me from my sin. Okay. But now what I'm doing is making you Lord over my life. And because you're Lord, you have the option to place me wherever you want. <laughs> Watch this now. First, just make a note of this. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 18 says that God has placed each one of us in the body as it pleased him. Okay. 
Because he's Lord, Glenn. He's Lord, so he has the right to put me wherever he want to put me at. So, so, so it's not an accident that people are here. Because God placed you here. Why? Because it's his pleasure. It's for his pleasure. Amen. So now, 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 watch this now. Since I understand that at the moment of salvation, I'm under new authority, and God has the right to place me wherever he wants me to be, then watch this now. I don't have the right to leave just because I don't feel like it. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then when I am in my set place, I experience the supernatural supply of God. Okay, let me show you, show you what I mean. In John chapter 15, it says that God is the vine and we are the branches. We cannot survive without the vine. The moment we disconnect, we d disconnect from our supply. You, you, you go break a limb off, break a limb off a tree and put the limb on the ground, it's going to die. Why? Because it's not connected. Amen. When, I, when I'm connected to that source, that, that vine, then watch it now, I get all the nutrition, all the supply that I need. And it's when I'm in my set place, when I'm in the place where God set me because I've accepted him as Lord and Savior. Now he has a right to tell me what to do. Then I begin to get the supply, the supply, the supply, the supply. Why? Because I'm in my set place. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then, then, then watch this now. Watch this, watch this. So when I know that I'm saved and I know that God has the right to set me, then I got to understand that I'm selected and I'm called for a purpose. Amen. Amen. So, so at the moment of salvation, at the moment of my new beginning, I'm called to a purpose. Now, what most people don't understand is they only look at call as if you're getting called to preach. God's calling you to preach, you know, calling you to pastor, do stuff like that. No, God is calling all of us. Amen. And uh, it's when I accept that call because of my salvation that even if I don't recognize my potential right now, if I just stay in the plan of God, my potential will come forward. I like to say it like this. Lady Gwen didn't marry me for my money. Because I didn't have none. She married me for my potential. <laughs> Amen. I, have, I had so much potential. Glenn. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And, 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 each, and, and each and every one of us, there's so much potential that God has invested inside of us. That it's a shame that you passed the graveyard and so much potential died because they would not fulfill the plan of God for their lives. Now, finally, for the night. Once I'm saved, I have to understand that there is a satanic plot against me. Yep, the devil's trying to kill me, trying to destroy me, because he does not want the potential that God has invested in me to come out. Because when I begin to participate in the plan of God for my life, my life and begin to be a disciple, a learner, somebody that will hear the voice of God and obey the voice of God, and do what God said. Then I become a witness. And I become a threat to the kingdom of, of darkness. Because I'm a disciple. Amen. And so even in the face, face of fractured relationships. I got to understand. That's what the devil tricks are. He tried to fracture relationships. Mm -hmm. Not only that. But he tried to get you into a fearful, fearful response. When you hear God's voice. You remember Gideon? Gideon was tripping with God. He like, God told Gideon, you're, you're a mighty man of valor. Gideon said, who, who are you talking about? You're not talking about me. You want me to go fight a, fight a war? I'm not qualified to fight. And he said, no, no, don't, don't get in fear. You're my man. You're my man. You are my man. He said, okay, God, if, if, if you're really talking to me, wait on one side, draw another on that fleece, I know you're talking to me. He did it. Flip it the other way, God. And God used Gideon to kill 135,000 army with 300 men. But he was fearful. Mm. Then, then the devil would try to cause people to get into rebellion. Somebody say rebellion. Amen. Why? Because if you're in rebellion, you can't please God. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. 
Amen. So, so why, why do I need salvation? Because I sin. Why do I need to accept, accept Jesus as Lord and Savior? Because he's the only way. Amen. And then once, once I accept him, man, now, now my life changes. I, 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 get to start, I get to start doing some, some new and great things for the kingdom of God by being a disciple. Amen. But I got to continue in God's word. I got to continue. Somebody say continue. I got to continue in it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I got to stop tonight because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen. Hallelujah.